It's great for some, but for others, the building of a new Europe is no cause for celebration. Amid increasing talk of a disconnect between the European Union and its people, political leaders face a real challenge. But there are some countries where interest in the EU is at record levels. There's disadvantages, but mostly advantages. It's much better, yes. I think most of the Maltese uh, prefer to be in the EU. Malta is the envy of larger countries struggling to spark interest in the European Union. A decade ago, just 53% said yes in a referendum to join the EU. Today, it's near the top in surveys on whether people feel European and think their voice counts. In the last EU elections in 2009, Malta had the highest turnout among nations where voting is not compulsory. We met a woman working in public relations who's typical of those keen on Europe. Her studies focused on EU affairs and she's been heavily involved in related activities. I think it's the idea of interacting with students and people abroad who have similar interests to you and who want to see um, Europe succeed, the idea of Europe succeed and the member states within the EU succeed. When you discuss these things with people, it becomes like a, it takes a similar pattern. People in Malta have the same tastes and the same problems and the same ideas as people abroad. Vivian is one of those who recently attended a European Citizens Dialogue meeting. Dozens of similar gatherings have been held across Europe as Brussels attempts to encourage local debate about the future of the bloc. Here in Malta, people don't hesitate to share their views. Obviously, there's the short-term issues to catch up, but uh, the fact that we're officially European, obviously part of a bigger family, all is well. I mean, there are the advantages of large-scale economies. Some taxes, we, we, uh, we increase some taxes sometimes, and, uh, we, and it's good because they helped us, they helped us along uh, even to uh, work the streets and... Uh, there's a lot of work that they did in Malta. We have moved forward quite a bit, uh, seeing that, you know, we have to conform to certain rules and uh, regulations that are good for the country. I have nothing against the people, because we are European, right? But I believe that uh, Europe is a club eh, for the rich. And I think Malta done very much. Since we went, to, we went to Europe, you know, we're down very much. Cost of living went up, you know. The country's Prime Minister is committed to defending Malta's place in Europe. But even he campaigned against membership ten years ago. Experts say the economic benefits for this nation of 420,000 are undeniable. And there's now political consensus on Europe. I think there is a correlation between economic performance, national economic performance and support for Europe and uh, the Maltese economy has not been doing uh, badly so I, I think it has been doing quite well and this explains why I think partly explains why the support for Europe uh, is so strong. And the support is there despite growing concern about illegal immigration. Other experts say interest in Europe is boosted by the fact that Malta is a highly politicised country. Campaigners say as well as encouraging debate on Europe and listening to citizens' concerns, a lot more information is needed on EU rights and benefits. And even here in Malta, surveys show many people still don't know enough about their European rights. In the capital, Valletta, we came across business people attending an information meeting organised by the European Commission. Its main representative here says talking to targeted groups is key. It's useless to try to speak to everybody about everything all the time. That way you end up speaking to nobody about anything. 
So we try to speak to small groups of people who are interested in particular themes. If it's businessmen, we speak to them about access to finance. If it's people in the travel industry, we speak about the benefits of health insurance cards. We speak to younger people about the benefits of having roaming charges. Always trying to identify interest groups and addressing their particular interests and concerns. European officials know they have to find new ways of ensuring that citizens are at the heart of the EU. And part of the challenge is what to do about surveys that show that only 28% of Europeans feel their voice counts.